Hi everybody, my name is Ole Carstensen and I would like to quickly demo some new ReactsFF features that are in the ADF 2017 release, namely eReactsFF and the Molecule Gum. First for eReactsFF, eReactsFF allows for a pseudo-classical treatment of explicit electrons, explicit in that sense meaning that you will actually have electron particles moving around in your ReactsFF simulation. And the trajectory I would like to show you comes from the field of lithium ion battery research. And um, it's about the simulation of the mechanism of the formation of the solid electrolyte interface at the anode. And uh, in particular about the reduction pathways of ethylene carbonate. So what we will see in the trajectory is that the lithium which is represented, the lithium atom, I should say, is represented by a lithium cation in the simulation and an explicit electron, which is represented by this transparent sphere and, of course, some lithium carbonate. And um, the electron from the lithium will then be transferred to the ethylene carbonate, um, causing a ring opening that is a CO bond breaking as a seventh step second step and finally the formation of this ethylene carbonate lithium radical. Now let's take a look. So I already opened the trajectory in ADF movie. Let me just make this full screen. So you can see it's only a small trajectory example trajectory we can already see all the explicit electrons moving around but let's just jump to the start and take a closer look at one reduction reaction so if i get this a bit slower so we should s soon see the ring opening. There was the ring opening and that is the formation of the radical species. Just play it again. Now, on to the second feature, namely the molecule gun. Let me just briefly show you this overview slide. Now, the molecule gun is basically a fancy name for a pretty simple feature. And the feature is that you can add particles, molecules, or atoms to your simulation at a specified time with a specified position and a specified velocity vector. So you can shoot particles at other particles. That's why it's called or nicknamed, say, the molecule gun, so enforced collisions. Or you can also continuously add particles, and that can be used for studying deposition processes on surfaces, say, for example. And I would like to briefly demo both approaches to you. Now let's just take a look at ADF inputs already open here. Now there are online tutorials available, or there's one online tutorial available for the molecule gun. And we will jump right in the middle of that tutorial. So I actually did already prepare our graphene sheet. So that's our graphene sheet at which we want to shoot the buckyball. I will show the lattice vectors. Okay, so now to add the buckyball, we just 
imported from the compounds database. Here it is, Lucky Ball. So everything you import from the compounds database will automatically be selected in the GUI. And, and that's super convenient for the molecule gun, it will also automatically be assigned to a region. Now what we need to make sure now is that the buckyball is within the space contained by the lattice vectors. And to do so, we use the GUI presets. We take a view along the x-axis. I will use the keyboard shortcuts later on. So there we are. And from the top, that looks good. If we skip this step and we add the particle at the origin of this lattice vectors, then within the movie that we will simulate, we will see like split buckyballs. So then we have a situation where we say have a quarter of a buckyball coming in from here, another quarter being on the other corner and so on and so forth that we don't want. So that's why we moved it to this space inside the lattice vectors, say. Now we can set up the molecule gun, just go to model molecule gun and then add molecules from buckyball. You can see that two dummy atoms are showing up, a yellow one and a red one. These are used to define uh, the initial velocity vector. Actually, they only define the, um, the direction of the velocity vector. They do not define the length that you can control via this temperature field. So the kinetic energy, you can set a temperature that then is uh, translated into a velocity. So currently the buckyball will travel away from the graphene sheet once it's added to the simulation, but we can use adjust direction. One of the presets is minus Z. So now, since the particle will travel from the slightly bigger yellow dummy atom to the red one, we will actually shoot at the surface and not away from the surface. So I don't want to shoot perpendicular. Actually give it a bit twist like this. Okay, that still looks good. And the velocity is set by the temperature keyword. I shall go for 40,000 K because graphene is actually very robust and stable and it requires quite a high velocity to actually uh, cause some visible damage to this graphene sheet. Now the last settings will be start at iteration and frequency. We want the buckyball to be added at um, iteration number 250. And we don't want to add buckyballs continuously. So this setting would ask for a buckyball, a new buckyball being added every 1000 steps. This we don't want. So we just enter some very high frequency and then we are good to go. Now we save as buckyball shoot. I did run this before, so the GUI asked me if I want to override the results. I do. Use Control R to start your job. And now we can take a look at the trajectory with ADF movie. There's the buckyball. See, the simulation is running live now, actually on one core of my desktop computer. So what I would like to do is I would like to have a nicer visualization. So I will select all the carbon atoms in the graphene sheet and then go to the panel view molecule sticks 
and by doing so all carbon atoms of the graphene sheet will be represented by sticks while the carbon atoms that were originally in the buckyball are still represented by spheres. Aha, and now we can also see the impact. And you can see that at 40,000 K velocity, the buckyball did actually damage the graphene sheet. Although we did not shoot right through the graphene sheet. For that, we would probably need a higher temperature. I'll play it one more time. Okay, so that's an example of an enforced collision. I should just close this and kill the calculation so that we can proceed with the next example of depositing molecules on a surface. We start a new ADF input. We just close the old one. And for this example, we will use an aluminum surface and that is the exact same aluminum surface as the one in the ReXFF online tutorial that is put into a water box. That's the temperature regions tutorial. So we bring up the lattice vectors again. And I would like to continuously add water molecules onto this surface. Again, we import water from the compound database. It's the most convenient thing. And you can see that the water molecule has been added, but it's rather small. So you can tick in this regions dialog, you can tick the regions field next to water to draw some glowing spheres around your water molecule that doesn't actually do anything for the actual calculation is just for visualization purposes, makes it just easier to spot the small water molecule for me. Again, we make sure that the water molecule is contained in the space spent by the lattice vectors. That looks good. Move it a bit more to the center. And So move it a bit further down. Okay. Now to the molecule gun window, we want to add molecules from water. And you can see again, we are aiming away from the surface. We use the direction preset minus Z to shoot at the surface. And now we want the Z coordinate to be fixed, but we want the X and Y coordinates to be random. So that our water molecules, when they are continuously added, sort of spread across the surface and not just come down at the very same, very exact spot all the time. And this we can do via the second drop down menu, which is currently set to X, Y, Z, meaning that both are that all three coordinates x, y, and z will be fixed. We just select z from the drop-down menu um, such that only the z coordinate will be fixed and x and y coordinates are random. Now a little tip, um, whenever you use the GUI and you see some um, input options, you can always hover your mouse above the according input option to bring up tooltips. Now we need to set a velocity. I'm just going for 1000 K here. We will again bring up the first water molecule at iteration 250. And then we just leave this frequency preset at 1000. Um, that will mean that from on, iteration 250, 
we will add one water molecule every thousand steps until the end of the simulation. Now all we need to do is save our calculation and then run the calculation. We'll bring up ADF movie again. So you see this is like the first frame. And there's the first water molecule. And this one actually bounces off the surface. On the bottom left, you can see the iterations. So we are already at iteration uh, 3000, that is now. And the water molecules will be continuously added. So just play from the start. view from the top. And you can see that the X and Y positions are random. So this concludes my little demonstration on eReactiveF which was honestly just a teaser since this feature is still under development. And the molecule gun, I hope you liked it and uh, enjoy using our new ADF 2017 release.